Welcome back to TYT Sports, everybody. Uh, if you've seen the clip on the New York Giants, which should be the first clip up between myself and Emma, well, I've done the intro. But if you haven't, Emma Vigeland, TYT Politics, all-star over there on that channel. Give it a subscription. It's worth it. Follow her on Twitter. She's got more followers than myself. And Hassan, that's a huge win for the company. So make sure to like and favorite, all that good stuff. Uh, a fun clip we have for you because uh, Emma's a big NFL fan and all week emails, can we please talk about the NFL? Please, can we talk about the NFL? I think I sound less whiny over email okay, than I'm you're sorry. making it. You were like, yo, dude, let's talk about the NFL. Yeah. Is that more like it? So I'm like a cool, chill guy in this email? Yes, you're yeah. a cool, chill dude in this email. Nice. <laughs> well, it's like I used to do everything in, in, a, in a Trump voice for whatever reason. That's everything tremendous. Everything I would do in quotes yeah. would just be, I'd read the quote, like regardless who it was. Could have been a three-year-old who was quoting it. Doesn't matter. Uh, Super Bowl, we don't want to to see, and the Super Bowl we know the NFL wants to see. Oh, so obvious. Well, what's, awesome. And what is that obvious answer? Cowboys, Patriots. Yes, yes. Ugh. The ratings would make advertisers Ugh. drool. I feel ill. So who would you root for in that? I think I know the answer, but who would you root no, for in that situation? No, I, I mean, I'd root for the Patriots, because we were talking about it earlier. Mm -hmm. As Giants fans, we don't have any qualms with the Patriots. Thank you for those two Super Bowl victories. Thank you for falling on your face and, and giving us those two championships. We're fine really with nice. it. It was really nice. It was kind. Yeah, it was very sweet of you. It's charity. No. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't go sure. that far. I'm not going that far. Um, <laughs> but, like, they gave up one of their many opportunities for a championship for us to have a little bit of happiness. So, good on you, Patriots. You, too, you say a little bit of happiness, and I think you're the same. As a Knicks, Mets, and Giants fan yeah. my whole life, it's my only happiness. I'm all three of those and the Rangers, so. Oh, no. Yeah. Wow. How have you made it this far? I don't know. And it's not know. like the election was super fun either. No, no. No, I'm like not. I'm hanging on by a thread here. All right, you're doing, like, look, 2020, <laughs> it's all going to turn around for everything. Sports teams, hopefully politics. Our country doesn't rip itself apart. No, but America's going to be great again, and the Cowboys are going to make it happen too. The cow We're going to make the Cowboys great again? But they seem to already be great. Yeah, they're so, great again. Yeah. Damn. You're right. Uh, so here's the point. The NFL knows a $13 billion reported industry in 2015, yeah. which means they're going to report $15 billion this year. Uh, that's an estimate. Or $14 Although million. ratings are going down. Ratings are down, but don't be uh, duped by them. If I'll yeah. use the word duped in this clip. The reason ratings are going down was a twofold uh, thing. One, uh, the election had a major impact on sports. Because it, it, it splits viewership. When the debates are on, yeah. when uh, the Cubs are even in the World Series, it causes the attention to be diverted. And that there's so much coverage and there's so many headlines that even on, think about it, even watching on, like, I think Fox and CBS still host local markets. I just watched Red Zone and, and DirecTV, so I have no idea what it's on oh, anymore. Red Zone. But they were even running, you know, tonight at 8 o'clock. Make sure to tune in to Trump or Hillary or Bernie or Jill Stein. Like, it didn't matter. So I think that had a very negative impact on it. And then two, the afternoon games and the primetime games simply weren't that good. And the only way to boost ratings in general, good football, good matchups. So what's happening down the stretch? Division matchups, yeah. which are going to be more tight games. And I think ratings are going to see a big boost because at this point, I hate using this term because I don't mean it by everybody. I just mean, and I'm curious your thoughts on this, like a percentage of people are a little bit sick of the election. Oh. So they want to get their distraction back. Sports. Yeah. I mean, everyone's sick of the election. I was sick of the election. <laughs> I mean, as much as I love it, like, the the when you have two candidates that are absolutely hated, people don't love talking about it. People don't like thinking about it. And also, I would say, you're right. The NFL hasn't had that many compelling games this year that... Rams Seahawks game was probably the worst football game I've ever seen in my life and we've had like an insane amount of ties it just hasn't been that compelling of a year and there's a ton of parity uh, mm -hmm. all, across a bunch of divisions I mean I, the NFC South like what's gonna happen there exactly every year the <laughs> yeah well yeah and then the AFC South also a ton of we parity. could just get rid of both of those just kind of push them we're fine. To the <laughs> no, I'm gonna miss the Texans so much. Brock Osweiler is a wonderful man. All I, six foot six of him. Oh yeah, I said it before the beginning of the season that it was like the worst signing. Idiotic. You're smart for that because we talked about at one point. I was gonna make a jerk in one of our Turks and Jerks, you know, uh, uh, 
the Houston Texans in general yeah. for signing Brock Osweiler or make the Turk John Elway. But then you realize that John Elway threw him a big contract. Yeah. And it, so it just makes Brock Osweiler one of the biggest jerks of the year <laughs> because not only did he say, did he scoff off a Super Bowl winning defense that he was going to get handed the keys to yeah. and have a very good chance of getting back. They're a seven-win football team right now, and that whole division's tight. He, did, he opted to go to the Texans, who he can't seemingly get 100 yards of offense any which way possible, no. week in and week out, just because he wanted five to ten million more dollars. Yeah. I know, it's a lot of money, but still, you know, take your $60 million contract, $30 million guaranteed with the Super Bowl winning team. But does it make him a jerk if it makes him smart? as Trump would say when he evaded his taxes. Like, oh. he, he got more money out of it. He got more money out of it. He did, but he got a lot of hate out of it, too. That's yeah, true. but deservedly, because that guy shouldn't be starting in most te- on most teams. And that's a talented football team. It's not like the Houston defense is, uh, Houston's defense is anything to scoff at. Of course not. It's, like, it's really good. And he has Hopkins, and he could be making an actual – and Lamar Miller, like, he has weapons. No, they have, they have an offense, uh, absolutely. They all – I mean, of course, and J.J. Watt's still one of the best players when he's healthy. He's one of the best players in the league. Right. I mean, the, there's there's no reason that he shouldn't be succeeding, um, but we've gotten off on a tangent. We've tangented. So the Houston Texans hopefully aren't making the Super Bowl, but it would fall into the equation of if the Houston Texans and the Philadelphia Eagles made the Super Bowl <laughs> – all those advertisers that were drooling would be booking it for the NBA Finals, saying, no, we'll just wait for LeBron and the Warriors to get back there. Yeah. I mean, I think I think a Falcons-Texans Super Bowl sounds like... Sounds rough. Sounds rough. Yeah. It's in Houston, I think, too. So they would have home field advantage. That's the worst city I've ever been to, by the wow, way. Wow, you're not the... F- so I... No disrespect, Houston. I'm Sorry, a guys. big fan right now of, believe it or not, James Harden and what the Rockets are doing. So put some respect over there. That's the fourth person in my life that I've heard say Houston is the worst city in America. Mm. It's because it's not insignificant. It's because it's a large city, and it's all concrete, and it's the worst very, known city very in America. humid. Right. It's the worst significantly large enough city to, to piss people wow. off. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can't yeah. get pissed off by, like, Oklahoma City. It's no, too small. It's small. Yeah. They got the Thunder. They're doing good. They're fine. They got like, good football there too. Yeah. The Sooners. Oh, right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> College football. I can't believe that's the fourth. You're like, like since I've turned 21, four years ago, you're the fourth person to say it. Ben Mank says it all the time. Yeah. He actually sucks. looks at me and go on every possible opportunity goes, Houston, also known as the worst city in the country. I feel terrible. But, hey, I haven't been there, so I will not ever take a trip there on purpose. So if I ever have to fly there and like connecting flights... I'll explore your city. Yeah. Maybe I'll be a social a justice mask. Texans warrior. <laughs> yeah. a social justice Houston warrior the whole <laughs> way through. So that would be another one. But I think, like, to the big thing here, the Cowboys versus the Patriots, I think, would actually be an overwhelmingly popular Super Bowl. And it would also bring in the hate watchers. Yeah. Because people are sick of the Patriots. I give so much respect to them. Uh, J.R. Jackson does not. He's our senior conspiracy correspondent <laughs> for the Patriots. They're always cheating. Their headsets don't work, whatever it might be. And the Cowboys, for some reason, America's team, really does look like there's only a handful, one or two. I still say the Seahawks being one of them. And the wild cards of like a giant, uh, yeah, well, maybe a Giants, but the, like the Cardinals finding their form. Right. Or even, even though the Packers are a bad football team, maybe a drastic change. And Aaron Rodgers just says, screw this, I'm going to win six straight. I, don't, I, think that's, I think it's more likely they finish 4-10, 4-12 and, 10, uh, and 12 than they finish. 10 and 6. Right. Well, the Packers just look abysmal. That's for another clip. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, I think, I think as much as I hate to say it, the Cowboys are playing unbelievable football. Yes, please stop, though. It's just but not... They're so fun to watch. <laughs> like, and oh, yeah. I, I can almost remove myself and just be like, this, first of all, Dak Prescott just is not just someone who can manage a game or has all of the, he can stand behind that line and, and, and throw passes when he needs to. He's a game changer. Yes. And the fact that he's even in the conversation for MVP right now, would anyone have picked this a year ago? No chance. No because chance. for and I was on the non believer side up until week five, even though they were four and one, I said, It's Tony Romo's team, you'd have to be insane to make Dak Prescott the stuff. And then week in, week out, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. You have to follow that path. Yes, they have an amazing offensive line. You can make many quarterbacks look great behind an amazing offensive line. It's the little things like you just mentioned, game management, 
making the right plays to get out, like to, to yeah. lead drives, know when to use your timeouts, and find your receivers, not named Terrence Williams, to get out of bounds. Terrence so, Williams sucks, by the way, right? Are we yeah, yeah, we've that's all that's okay, been okay, cool. it's been decided. It's in the books. Reddit's been talking about it. We've accepted it. We've totally accepted that. So very good call, though. By the way, decided this week. Doug Martin also sucks. Doug Martin also sucks. Is there yeah. anybody else? It's been decreed. Who else decreed. sucks this year? Um, I don't know. Uh, oh, Ryan Tannehill sucks. Ryan Tannehill. Oh, but yeah. his. Have you ever seen his wife? She's very, she's very, beautiful. very beautiful lady. So uh, I've also heard that there's times where Ryan the, Tannehill's cute too. The Miami, <laughs> someone has a crush. <laughs> so the Miami papers, like their like tabloid magazines, yeah. will write like if Ryan Tannehill has a bad game, they'll put Lauren Tannehill's husband <laughs> as like went like four for twelve with three interceptions or whatever it might be. I didn't Which know anyone great. in Miami cared enough to write a snarky headline about Ryan well, Tannehill. Well, you know they like the heat, and other than that, they're all like my 85 year old grandfather. Yeah, New or York, the, New York transplants. Like I thought, the Hurricanes were like. Isn't like, Alan Grayson down there? Yeah, that guy's the man. Yeah, met him. Really great guy. Good guy. Yeah, sweet. I've seen guy. him on like Bill Maher and Daily Show stuff like that. Very so. quirky. Wears crocodile uh, boots. Like as Craig a Sager. He's like a Craig Sager guy. Yeah, he's All cool. Right, down with that. So again, I think some other Super Bowls that would obviously make advertisers and the NFL even more money and happier, a Patriots-Giants rematch, not just because I'm a Giants fan, not just because you're a Giants fan, a third one would be great. Yeah. Uh, a Giants-Cowboys-NFC championship game. Uh, I think a Seahawks versus Patriots rematch would be very tantalizing. And I don't want to count out the fact that even though it's defensively led and I'd be surprised if they made it back there, but if the Broncos, mm. the Broncos were to find the Cowboys, you're talking about two of the most historic franchises that have fan bases from the 60s that rolled on. The, it's like when the Packers do well. Right. I've always said this. Green Bay has no right to be a major market in the NFL, in any sporting franchise in the world. The town owns the team. But that's why you can't help but love them. Like, I, I'm not a Packers fan, but I'm a huge Aaron Rodgers of fan. Of course. He's my favorite offensive player. I'm a player big in Olivia Munn fan, so. Right. It works I mean, out. I, he's very handsome as well. Um, I did try to watch The Bachelorette and threw up in his mouth. His brother's a total tool, but he's very cool. <laughs> he's very cool. And I, I, you can't help but love the Packers, the, 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 the fanfare, the stadium, the history, the cold. It's just a, it's football. You know? It is. It's it is. That's where it should be. Pl I mean, look, I agree with you 100%. I just think it's amazing that, like, the Green Bay Packers where it's negative 20 and they're sitting there in, like, T-shirts because that's a warm day in Wisconsin. Yeah. Has a huge fan base. So, and it's all Vince Lombardi based in their history, too. So, a lot of different options for the Super Bowl. A lot of Super Bowls we would like to see. A lot of Super Bowls that we know we wouldn't. Raiders fans, you deserve to at least get close. Oh, the Raiders are so fun. Those fans in a Super Bowl stadium would be pretty amazing. Yeah. Because they'd fill it. Oh, yeah. I think they'd fill it. I think they'd go crazy. They're playing in Mexico City Monday Night Football against the uh, Texans. Yeah. So, we're, this is, by the way, we're shooting it on Monday before the game happens. So, that's why we're not saying the Raiders won or lost. And we predict it ends in another tie. 6-6 six, six, or, like, at least an exciting 28-28? 1-1. One, one. One, is that even? That's, that's not, the only impossible It would be 6-6 six, six because of two missed extra points right. based on this week. <laughs> yeah. There would be... Two missed extra points again. So, uh, all right. Super Bowl, you would really like to see. I love hearing from the the Browns. No, sorry, guys. 1-15. <laughs> Hopefully that one win is it against the G-Men. At Emma Vigeland on the Twitter. She tweets about sports. Thumbs up. thumbs up. I do thumbs up. I point, comment below, all that stuff. Uh, Emma tweets about sports sometimes. Sometimes. So if you're a Giants fan, obviously jump on board. Enjoy them. And if you're a Cowboys fan, do not interact. Don't interact. Joking. At TYT Sports over on the Twitter for the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, favorite, all the good stuff. We'll see you next time.